When building a new section in Lumos, we can either start from Section Starter Full or Section Starter Simple. With Starter Simple, we have component fields for theme, padding top, and padding bottom. Inside Starter Simple, we have a section element and a div to act as our container. Inside of Section Starter Full, we have more options. So we have component fields for our theme, padding top, and padding bottom, but we also have groups for each element. So an eyebrow, heading, paragraph, button one, button two, main visual, and background visual. And if we don't need any of these elements, we can easily remove the group, but it's still faster than creating all these fields from scratch. So in this case, we're gonna start from that starter full. We'll go ahead and duplicate this component, and we'll name this new component section slash hero, and this is going to be our main hero section, and we'll create. And we follow this naming convention so that when we search section slash, it shows all our reusable sections, and we can filter it down to only the different hero sections or any different type. So we'll drop in this new component that we just created, and it has all those component fields attached by default. Now we can open it, and when the section, we'll give it a class of hero main wrap, when the container, we'll give it a class hero main contain, and we'll throw in a U container on top, so it has the padding. And inside of that, we'll drop a div with a class of hero main layout, and we'll give it a U grid column two. So it's just a two column grid that'll wrap on mobile. We'll bring this up to the top. And inside that layout, let's add a div with a class of hero main content. And inside the layout, let's add another div, hero main visual. And we'll give that a U visual so it has a position relative and aspect ratio. And we'll drop our main image video sort of component inside of that visual. Now inside the content, I'll go ahead and add this eyebrow. I'll go ahead and drop a div and we'll give it the class of hero main title and we'll give it a U text and we'll go with H2 on this. And then we can go ahead and drop our global heading inside of that. Now let's also add a hero main text and let's give that a U text. We'll go with small in this case and we'll drop our global paragraph component inside of that text element. And then we also have this div that acts as a button group and it has the visibility to turn both buttons off attached to that. So we'll go ahead and place this right under the text. And let's give that the class of hero main button wrap. Now let's give it a horizontal flex and we want to align to the left on the X axis and on the Y axis, we want to align to center. And we'll apply that. We also want to allow wrapping. So we'll add an H wrap. And we also want a gap. So we'll go gap uh, extra small to space them apart. And on this content, let's add a vertical flex aligned to left on X and aligned to center on Y. And let's go with a gap small on this to space those elements apart. Now we have component fields for pretty much all of these elements, but let's say that we don't want to give an option for an eyebrow inside of our hero section. Well, what we would do is just delete that element and then go to the main component. And if we head to props, notice how all our eyebrow props are no longer in use. They're not attached. So we can just delete these and it will delete the whole eyebrow group. We also have an option on this component for a background visual, and that is turned off by default. But if we turn that on, we can have a whole background video or image behind this section, and of course, convert the section to dark mode in that case. Um, but I'll leave this set to inherit for now and turn the background visual off. And of course, we could remove that background visual entirely if we need to. Now, if we head over to headings and try to disable the heading, uh, what will actually happen is we'll still have the gap between that heading because the visibility is attached to this component. It's not attached to the parent div. So we just wanna connect that parent div to the heading visibility. And same for this paragraph, we wanna connect its parent div to the paragraph visibility. Now we can also set the defaults for this component. So we'll go up to the whole section, head to props, and we'll open up the heading text and we'll go ahead and edit what we want the default text to be whenever we drop in this component. And since this is used as a hero section, we'll set H1 to the default tag. That can always be changed per instance though. We have one word on its own line here. So let's go ahead and change our default max width. And we might try something like maybe 8CH to get it wrapping how we want there. And we can also control whether we want the background visual to be on or off by default, or maybe the second button off by default. We can control any of those defaults per the component. 
And now when we close out our whole component, and let's say we have multiple instances of this component, and on some of them, we might go ahead and change the default text and add uh, another word in here. And so now we might want to change our max width for this one specific instance, just because we have different content in here. So we can control that per component instance. When naming component fields, each field needs a unique name, even if they're in separate groups. So if we try to call this text, that name is already taken. So I always repeat the group name before we add the field name. And that way we don't have any kind of conflict. So this will be a paragraph text inside of the paragraph group. The first group on our section component should always be the section styles, and then the elements should follow in the order they appear on screen. So heading followed by paragraph, followed by button group, button one, button two, main visual, and then behind all this is the background visual. And inside each group, the first thing we should always have is the visibility for that element. And then the other fields should follow in the order that they're most commonly used. Now, if we have CSS or JavaScript for this component, we wanna store it inside the component itself so that that CSS and JavaScript isn't loaded on pages that don't have the component. And so it's easy to find and edit that code later. So inside of our section component, we have starters for styles and script. And we'll always want to duplicate this whenever we create a new one. And we'll call this styles hero main. So we're starting with style slash so that if we search for styles, we can easily find any of the CSS embeds that we have. So I'm gonna drop in hero main and we're making this its own component in case we ever need to unlink the main component for some reason, we still can globally update those CSS styles. Then we can open up our hero main style embed and inside of that, we can just add any CSS that's specific to this one section. We can do the same thing, but with our script starter. So we can duplicate our script starter and we'd want to call this script hero main. And once we have that set, we can save. I'll go ahead and copy the class name of this entire section component. Let's go ahead and drop in our script and we'll go with hero main component. And inside of that, let's go ahead and open up this embed. And right here where we're looping through the component name, we'll just paste in the name of our entire hero section. And then right here is where we would add our script affecting elements within that hero section. One component that should be on every page of our site is the custom code component. This holds any CSS that should apply to every page on the site. We also have an optional grid guide component. This creates some nice guides that help us align things while designing. They hide whenever we preview or publish our site. Another type of element we have is all of our global elements. These are elements that can be used inside of any section. We have our global visual component that we can turn the visibility of it off altogether. It has an optional image. Um, whenever that image is still loading in, we get a background color behind this. So we see a placeholder of the image coming in. Uh, we can set the alt text for this. We can also have an optional video on this, set the video URL and also an optional overlay if we're gonna put this behind some text or different content. We also have our global heading that we're using for all headings throughout the site. And this is a rich text by default because it allows us to bold, italicize, or even make a link on certain words within this and change the tag freely. Usually we lose all those options when linking plain text to a component field. But if we ever need to link this text to like a CMS name field or something that is plain text, we can actually just hide the rich text and show the plain text inside of this component. And that way we don't have to unlink the whole section if we need to link this to a plain text instead of rich. So rich is the default and the one we should use most commonly and plain text is a fallback inside of this global heading component. And the same follows for a global paragraph. We have our global eyebrow. Um, global content is just a grouping of all those things. So we can have the eyebrow, the heading, a paragraph and buttons all grouped in this. If we wanna just quickly add some content in and we can choose whether this should wrap to be centered align or left align like so. The only drawback to this is we lose control over the spacing and different styles. So if we want to drop this in an about section, but make the heading all caps only when that about section, these styles aren't related to the section that they're in. So for that reason, I would prefer to use the individual elements when possible so we can control all styles from the section itself. All of these global elements are going to start with a class name of 
uh, G underscore. So we know that it's a global element and that it's not related to any one section. The global card link component can help us fix a common mistake in web design. So often we turn our entire card into a link to make the whole thing clickable, but when screen readers focus on this, it has to read off the image alt text, card title, description, and button text. Whenever they focus on a link, it should just read the title of the page they're going to. So to fix that, we need to convert our entire card over to a div block, and then the link should just hold the title of the page we're gonna go to. So we'll convert this over to a link, but we still want the entire card to be clickable. So to do that, we'll drop in our global card link component. And this is just a position absolute link with a higher Z index. And it has some attributes attached that make it not readable by screen readers and also not focusable since it's a duplicate link. And because it's on a higher Z index and covering everything, this entire card becomes clickable. This is the way websites like Apple or Walmart handle this type of accessibility. And whenever we turn our entire card into a component, we might call it something like put it in a card folder, and this is for our blog. And what we can do is actually link this card link to a component field, we'll call this link, and then we'll link the, the link block that holds our uh, title to that same sort of field. So that we, we only have to adjust the link from one field on our component, and it'll change the absolute link and also the link wrapped around this title. The last component folder we have is the icon folder. This shows all the different types of icons we can use on our site. And we always set the size and the color of the icon from the parent of the component. That way the same component can be used at multiple sizes and colors, and the parent is what manages that. So to create a new icon, we can launch the SVG import Webflow app, and we can paste in our SVG, and it just adds it in here. And we'll select the SVG with no class or style applied. We'll create a new icon, and we'll call this slash heart, and that way we can use it in multiple places. Now for any outlined SVG, we want to link it stroke width. Right now this is set to two pixels. We want to link that to a variable. So we can open our variables, we can search for SVG stroke width, and we can just copy that variable name. Then if we head back to our SVG, we can replace that value with our variable. Now, depending on the size this is used at, the stroke width will just scale down to be smaller when the SVG is smaller. We want this stroke width to always be consistent. So to do that, we can add a vector dash effect and a value of non dash scaling dash stroke. And once we apply that, that stroke width will actually be 1.5 pixels. So it'll match border widths and other places we're using that variable throughout our site. And then we would just drop this icon inside any div and control its color and size from that parent div. Be sure to check the Lumos docs for the up-to-date guide on how to use components and overview of each component inside the Lumos framework.